What's up and good evening guys. Welcome back to another video. Um, I know GoPro suck at night, so I'm gonna try to make this part of the video really quick. However, I wanted my reaction to be genuine. It is currently 1.30 in the morning, super late. I probably look as tired as I am uh, going on like 48 hours of no sleep. It's been rough, but I am beyond excited. We've got a new truck showing up today for the channel, for the ranch, for myself. Crazy story about this truck though. I have owned this truck for two years and I have never seen it. Um, and I wanted the, kind of a like legit reaction. I don't want to wake up in the morning and be like, oh look, I've never seen this truck, even though I saw it tonight. So like I was saying, I bought this truck two years ago in the heart of like the pandemic, and I tried to find somebody to transport it. I went through a bunch of freight brokers, um, vehicle brokers, and everybody freaked out about it and just like would flake on me. It was the most frustrating thing. So while I've owned it for two years, I haven't been able to get it out here for two years. That is until now. My good friends, Anthony and Shannon, stepped up, went and picked the truck up from Minnesota, brought it back to Colorado, and it is now finally tonight about to land here at the ranch. They are gonna be pulling up any second. I'm gonna be guiding them in. There's a whole back way to get to the ranch when you got big trailers. Oh, I'm so excited for this, so excited for this. It's super, super dark out here again. Sorry for the crappy video, but let's see if they can make the turn into the driveway. So I ride up on that side over there and then you basically gotta get the front end to where like you're almost hitting that wall. I don't wanna say we didn't think this part through till uh, right now, but uh, I can make it with my bumper pole. It's 30 foot. Um, <laughs> Somebody put a ditch there. <laughs> If the new entrance was done, you're right. That's why we built the new entrance. Well, started building the new entrance. I'm way too tired for this. <laughs> you know, it sucks. I normally leave a shovel out here when it's rainy season. We're wearing the same. We're, we're twinning. Mine oh, no. They're uh, a little, little jacked up. Maybe not. I don't know. This is what being unprepared looks like right here. Uh, I had a full day to prep for this. Didn't even cross my mind that we we're going to run into this issue. And we grabbed the closest tools to the front of the property we could find to knock this high spot down. You probably can't see it, but that's a nice, pretty nice ledge there. Anthony seems pretty against me going to get in the Mini X. He just wants to try it. Granted, he's also been on the road, what, 16 hours? About, yeah. That's pretty steep there, guy. It's not gonna, I mean. Yeah, I don't know about that one there, Bubba. How do you feel about camping out on the road? I don't know. <laughs> Okay, new tactic. We're gonna see if we can back it in because there ain't no way that's gonna happen. And for everybody who thinks I'm crazy and put too many lights on things, it is nice to have all the lights on that trailer right now because it is pitch black out here. Anthony's a trooper for, uh, for making this drive, that's for sure. Keep coming, keep coming. All right, you're good right there. Stay as wide left as you can. You might be golden, bro. It's gonna be very close. Let's see what that power stroke's got. Yeah. All right, keep going. Don't stop. All right, just had to change up the approach angle a little bit, and we got it. All right, y'all, by the time everything got situated that night, it was about 3 a.m., and we, we couldn't unload the truck. We just had to go to bed. It was super, super late. So we're going to cut to a clip now of where this truck came from. It actually came from my Uncle Jeff, who owns a beautiful farm in Minnesota, and this truck came with the farm, and he was gracious enough to sell it to me and hold on to it for two years until we could figure out transport. So to Jeff and family, thank you for that. Let's cut to a clip of Anthony driving all the way to Minnesota in the wintertime to go pick that truck up. All right, guys, so we just, uh, just pushed Picked up Andrew, got the trailer all loaded, ready to go. We got a 14 hour drive or so to Minnesota to grab Ryan's truck, so uh, we'll keep you guys updated along the way. I'm sure there'll be some shenanigans going on between me and Andrew because you know how he likes to, uh, likes to mess around with stuff. That, and we like to party. We are now in Ainsworth, Nebraska, and um, these are prices aren't that bad. We've got tires going to our customer and rifle after we get done picking up Ryan's truck. Yeah, so we're just kind of hanging out. I got my uh, my little gas boy here. You ready to top her off? Our diesel boy, excuse me, because we're driving a diesel. Uh, yeah, we're <laughs> you ready to top her off? Not top it off. 
Oh. Well, it stopped or oh, I guess that stopped. Anyways, we all right. Too long. Well, so far so good. We got about maybe, maybe 500 miles left until we are in uh, Minnesota. Yeah, that's where we're going, Minnesota. But yeah. Anyways, we'll keep you guys updated as we uh, keep pushing. Ryan, I hope you like your truck, dude. It's gonna be badass. Well, Ryan, um, you definitely owe me a car wash or a truck wash or something. Holy crap. <laughs> well, we got her kind of trashed. Uh, yeah, I would say uh, we definitely kind of trashed it. This thing is rough, dude. Yeah, about, about 40 minutes outside where we got to go. Hey, Rami, uh, if you're watching this, I'm, I'm going to need some stuff, man, because... Uh, I definitely should have coated this thing down before I left with some landslide, but ah, it's all right. You know, we'll be all right. Finally made it. Andrew's hard at work. Hi, Andrew. What's up? <laughs> My lies. Pretty nice. I think it's going to stay in Colorado, Ryan. That's what I'm thinking. Thinking this is going to be the SEMA 2024 build. I think it's pretty nice. Got some pretty little big old beefy tires on it for sure. It's definitely going to need brakes. We're gonna winch it up there now because uh, I drove it up here and um, and it barely, like it barely stopped. So it definitely is gonna need brakes, um, but Chris over at Great Coat Customs will take care of that for sure. It's not bad though, it's pretty good shape. The weather's not bad right now. Guys, so uh, we finally got it loaded. Not gonna lie, it was pretty sketchy. There's absolutely zero brakes, like I've said. So uh, we're gonna probably tire strap it, axle strap it, uh, leave the winch attached, everything we possibly can to get this thing not to roll. We got it pretty much where we wanted it at. So uh, now we're gonna get it all strapped down and uh, head back to Colorado. All right, so uh, you know, we definitely couldn't leave without seeing this uh, 1960s cat. This is a beautiful gem, by the is, way. Is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this thing is awesome. Where'd you go? Over here. <laughs> Over where? Look at our serial number? Yeah. <laughs> you notice it was gasoline, too? Is it? Yeah. Not, no shit. Unless this, the tag is wrong. But. Hey, uh, Ryan, so Andrew said he's going to come up here and steal it. So, oh, yeah. So you know. Um, you may not get it, but uh, Andrew definitely wants it. So that's, that's there you go. This thing is awesome. It is absolutely gorgeous out here, guys. Absolutely gorgeous. So we are in the middle of bumfuck Nebraska. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you already yes. jacked that up. Damn it! Now the next step for the truck was to make sure that it runs and drives reliably. As you can see when Anthony loaded it up, the truck had no brakes. I think it ran decent, but before it made its way all the way out to the ranch, I wanted to have that thing gone completely over because once it's out here, it's kind of far to take it anywhere to get it worked on. So our friends over at Greyco Customs, Chris and all of his crew were gracious enough to sign up for the task. So straight from Minnesota, Anthony took it to Greyco Customs and let them do their thing. All right guys, so we finally made it, finally, after 17 hours, snow. 17 is like 20. Well, okay, all right, well it was 17 hours from Minnesota to get here. We didn't sleep. We took shifts the whole time. It was <laughs> rough. We are now over here in Rifle, Colorado. I'm over here at Greyco Customs. Chris and Shanda own Greyco. They do a lot of, uh, what's up? Oh, oh, wait, look what we got. Look what we got here, hang on. The man, the myth, the legend. I'll get the hang of this YouTube thing, I swear, Ryan, I promise. Anyway, so we are we are here. Notice the patrol car behind me. Uh, Chris does a lot of uh, local law enforcement, fire department, 
uh, emergency vehicles. This is this, his F450 over here. He just, I just pulled in. So I'll give you guys a quick walk around on that right real quick. Sitting on a wicked eight inch. Super dirty. Why is it so dirty, Chris? You know, because I'm way too busy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So I'm standing here with Chris right now. You owner of Graco. So what's up, dude? What's up, man? So we we're just uh, going through Ryan's truck right now, kind of, uh, kind of just seeing what it all has to it, pretty much. I'm trying to see what motors in it, trying to see some of the issues that are that are wrong with it from it sitting for so long. Chris is gonna get this thing. Like I said earlier, is he's gonna get this thing right. We're gonna leave probably in about two weeks. So Chris has two weeks to uh, work his magic. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean. I mean, it runs, it drives. Like I said, it just needs the brakes and then some of the wiring gone through, I'm assuming. And, um, yeah, it'll be, I said, it'll be, it'll be a lot of wiring on it. Yeah, yeah, I know. For Chris is the uh, the wiring guru. Bear with us, guys. We are going to get this thing unloaded the best we can without the brakes in it. Okay. Probably going to let you down the trailer. You guys have to put gas in it. It's in it. already in it. So sometimes I stand here with Chris. Um, he's the one that's working on Ryan's truck. He's got like two weeks to do it, uh, but also his full-time job is uh, he works with law enforcement, a lot of like, law enforcement lighting, um, outrigs a lot of the vehicles, does all the lighting, horns, push bars, uh, roll cages, dog kennels, right? Mm -hmm. So we target mainly mainly police, patrol vehicles, undercover vehicles. Like this one is a brush truck for a fire department. Uh, we don't do like engines and ambulances and all that sort of stuff, but all the upfitting, both of these vehicles were originally civilian vehicles because due to the market, people can't get the SSVs when they need to. So we go down, go to the dealership, pick them up, take a civilian vehicle and turn it into that. Uh, he has different than other, other builders and stuff, I guess, or other, what is it, build it technically? There's, there's other outfitters out there. Outfitters yeah. or whatever, mm -hmm. so all his stuff is color matched. So usually these are typically black. Um, he'll go through here and actually color match the vehicle um, to give it some kind of more of a more of an appeal also. It does, yeah, so. because I mean, the fact of the matter is the officers are in these vehicles 24-7. Right. Means that we do build all the custom vehicles we build, we build the custom trucks, the cars, side-by-sides, all that sort of stuff. We take our customization and put it into upfitting as well. So that way you can personalize the vehicle pretty much as much as you want. The officer can say, hey, I want this here, I want this here, hey, I want this to look like this, I want this lighting pattern. And as long as the lighting pattern is safe, like we have no problem writing whatever we need to. So, I mean, in, the, in these vehicles, you can tell, even this one, you can see how all lights shut off, so when the officer comes back in the back, this vehicle originally had a third row seat, so what we did is we custom built a recessed enclosure down the side where it's an equipment package down there, that way the officer still has plenty of room to put all their stuff in, all the equipment's safe and protected, and yeah, this vehicle's ready to go. And, Ryan, we'll be back in two weeks. Pick your truck up, man. In the meantime, you'll have a good one. I'm out. Whew, last night was a late one, guys. I think I ended up going to bed about 4 a.m. This is my first look at seeing this old girl. 1960 F600. Oh, this thing is so, so cool. Again, a huge thank you to the Morris for bringing it out. This is Shannon's new truck. I haven't even seen this thing in person yet. This thing's going to be getting fully built for SEMA this year. Of course, rocking the ever so awesome. Work for decal and LB Motorsports. Shout out to Lacey. There you go. Give Shannon a follow right there. So I'd also follow Elevated Motorsports. But boom, they've been integral in bringing this thing out here. Look, we got like all the homies here. Look, we got some flog bumpers. 
I was going to be going to a project we're going to be working on. Look at this thing. This thing's gnarly. We'll see when they pull this thing off the trailer. It's like power wheels on steroids. Still waiting for everybody to wake up so then we can get this thing unloaded. So if you guys saw the video clips, uh, my uncle purchased a farm a few years ago and it came with a bunch of equipment, a bunch of vehicles, and this was one of them. Side unseen, didn't know what it was. Uh, I said, sure, sent him a check for it and I bought it two years ago. <laughs> um, so a little background, if you guys don't know, I come from a family of farmers. Pretty much the entire one side of my family, are they're all farmers. So I guess it was only natural that I bought a bunch of land and pretended to kind of not really be a farmer, but <laughs> Uh, it worked out so cool to keep this thing still not that it's like you know was in the family for very long But you know this thing's gonna stay with us for a while So after Anthony and Andrew went and picked this truck up they dropped it off over at our friends Graco They do vehicle customization outfitting um, all kinds of different stuff at their shop And they were nice enough to take this thing in and basically give it a I would say a once over But when I saw the amount of work they put into it, they gave it like a 50th over So let's get to some clips of Graco doing their thing I just want to give you guys kind of a rundown and a walkthrough on Ryan's truck that we've been working on the 1960 f600 it's got a 292 small block it is a two-ton truck it does have a hydraulic dump bed that we haven't been able to verify yet if it's working or not but let's take a look at it and see what you guys see got the traditional old school bedsides in the back this is really cool ryan you better keep this so it's got some electrical issues on the back the tail lights need to be replaced the wiring needs to be replaced so we'll get all that taken care of here in the next couple days uh, rear differential needs to get serviced. Pretty much rebuilding the rear. The drums and the shoes are good, but we're going to redo the cylinders, the bearings, the races, the wheel seals, all that stuff. So, Ryan's going to get the tires taken care of, so we don't have to worry about that. They're pretty heat cracked out. The interior, for the most part, is in really good shape. It's definitely had some mice in it. Had to fix the gas pedal. The gas pedal liked to go full throttle, did nothing else. The three speed manual truck. Drained all the fuel out of it. The fuel was so bad that it actually stained our hands when we drained it. <clears throat> the front, we're going to do wheel cylinders in. We can't do the shoes or the drums because the parts are not available anymore. So it's definitely going to have to get an axle swap. Up in the engine, we repaired the crossover pipe. Gasket was blown out on the side. Had a bunch of uh, pinhole rust here. The fuel line was kinked. The nut on the fuel line was stripped out. So we rebuilt the carburetor, put a new fuel line on it. Sealed this back up, header wrapped it to keep it from vapor locking on the fuel line. Did upper and lower radiator hoses, fuel filter on the bottom, belt. Flushed the system all out, drained all the oil. Just going to make sure it gets all serviced up for him. Going to clean up a bunch of the wiring over here. We did plugs, wires, cap. We're going to build a battery support bracket up there. That way the battery doesn't fall out. And just keep it all cleaned up for Ryan and make sure it's going to run really good. I gotta give a huge, huge thank you to Greg. I mean, those guys busted their freaking butt getting this thing done. They only had like a week to really go through this thing and get as much done as they could. And I'm uh, pretty, pretty excited. So a huge thank you to you guys over there. You guys are awesome. Um, Chris and all the team, thank you. Thank you so much for busting your butt to get this thing done. But this truck is pretty freaking solid. Again, 1960, that's what? 60 something years old, 63 years old. That's pretty wild. And there's not a lot of rust on it, right? It's got a little bit of rust here, a little bit of rust on the corner of the door. But for the most part, it's not a bad truck. I believe it was indoors a lot. And what these were used for is everywhere I've seen, these are grain hauling trucks for whatever reason, like these, every video I've come across, aside from a slight few that actually had like a true dump box on it, they were grain hauling trucks. But because it's a grain hauling truck, it also is a dump bed. So, I'm excited to get this thing off the trailer and start checking it out, playing with it. Look at that, Graco got us some new lights, everything wired up so we can actually be road legal. Yes, yeah, so we got some Fargo, North Dakota. I mean, we got all the cool old logos on here. Look at this, this thing was pinstriped at one point. Like legit pinstriped, how cool is that? Let's climb up, let's get up in the cab. So, it does have a uh, broken driver's side window. Actually, driver's side and passenger side. <laughs> Looks like they're flat glass, so we can get those made. Oh yeah, look at the nostalgia in this thing. Look how good a condition the dash is in. Woo, 75,000 miles, right? Those tenths of a mile, I'm assuming, maybe. I don't know, what do we got there? A spot for an old CB radio? East Grand Forks, Moorhead. I have no idea what that is. There's the PTO, so I wonder if that one engages it and that brings it up and down. Look at this seat. This thing is retro cool. Sick old picnic table pattern. I got the shifter, so I don't know a lot about these things. I've only watched a couple of YouTube videos, but they are a four speed with a two speed rear end. So essentially an eight speed. Oh, we do got a little rust in the floor there, but not too bad. I feel like that can be repaired. 
Let's go see if we can wake everybody up and uh, get this thing unloaded. I'm so excited to drive this thing around the ranch. What do we got going on here? I got a, is this an extra hydraulic valve? I don't know. I'm gonna have a lot of questions on this things that you guys are probably gonna be able to answer in this video. So uh, I'm new to this. Dude, check this out. It's even got pinstriping on the sideboards here of the stake bed. I'm assuming these are the original. It's got Omaha standard there. I'm assuming Omaha standard was a bed builder or an upfitter. Not 100% sure. Look at that. We even got pinstriping on the doghouse door, which is, so this is like a, again, these are grain haulers. So you can dump it and open this up and basically control the flow of everything that's getting dumped out of it. Uh, there's a bunch of sets of boards in there. I guess for different uses, uh, the original owner had this for around their farm. Um, so it came with a bunch of different sideboards. We'll see once we get it off. Hey, look at these door panels. Look at the door panels are in really good condition. The interior is in really good shape. Yeah. yeah. All right, I don't know how to start this thing. It's, oh, gee. Oh, 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 gee, you fall through the seat though. <laughs> it's probably going to be in uh, in gear. So I put it in neutral first. Uh, well, I think Gary loves it in. All right, all right, a little neutral. Well, dude, look at this. We got a choke, throttle. I don't know what. Our air means return air, maybe air. I don't know. All right, let's see, guys. Let's give this a shot here. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm assuming we should choke it. Um, what? Why not have to? All right, well, let's not choke it. Let's try without the choke first. Let's see. Maybe we should choke it. Maybe we should choke it. Oh, 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 oh. she's alive. Ease the choke in. Oh, dude. Listen. Oh, 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 oh. Choke it. Choke. Oh, oh. All right, all right, all right. We'll leave the choke out for a second there. This thing sounds mean. Dude, this thing got air conditioning? What? A factory? Is that, is that a factory Ford air conditioner? I don't know, guys. You let me know what you think. I mean, clearly it's a little out of whack there, but that's pretty cool. All right, let's choke in she stays running she stays running i'm gonna go in the back to make sure you come out good though straight back yeah yep it's still good yep you're good straight off Ah, the boy. These windows are tiny. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> uh, 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 She runs great. Thank you to the guys over at Graco. I was worried. I was worried I wasn't going to have brakes. So they went through, rebuilt the carburetor, did a bunch of stuff under the hood. Uh, we should pop the I don't even know how to pop the hood. Rebuilt the brakes. So we actually had brakes. So they couldn't find some parts for the front. So we're just rolling, I believe, off a of rear brakes. Don't quote me on that. Uh, it's got to be just this. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they, uh, I don't think back then they put much under the two. <laughs> Look at that monster! Woo! I think it stays up. Yeah. Now yeah, we're good. Alright, alright. Look at that. 1960 from Ford. The hood stays up. 2022 on a Bronco. Can't put freaking assisted uh, hinges on it. You gotta put the little stupid stick. Ridiculous. This hood probably weighs 400 pounds. Look at that bad boy. Alright guys, this here is a 292. Apparently there's a couple of different engines you could order with these trucks back in the day. I think I believe the 292 is on the smaller side. But it's impressive what they did with gas engines back then before like big diesel power plants were really a thing. So the guys over at Graco killed it. The thing, I mean it sounds awesome. They had a bunch of all kinds of exhaust leaks and old gas in it and all kinds of crap. Um, obviously, you know, Anthony and them had to winch it onto the trailer with no brakes and look at that. We were able to drive it off the trailer off those steep ramps and it stopped. That is impressive. Take it for a spin. All right, 
Oh, look at that. We get a better look now at all the sideboards. So there's just, I'm assuming we got some if we're hauling cattle. We got some if we're hauling dirt. We got a whole another set, I believe. Did you see the pinstriping on the rear? Yeah. Like even the wood has pinstriping. Over here too. It's all pinstriping as well too. So those are probably the original. I'm assuming whatever's pinstriped was original. All right, let's go take a sink for a little, little trip around the ranch, see how she does. We'll go open her up in all four gears. I've watched a couple YouTube videos on how to drive these things. Cause obviously I ain't never driven anything with like a split rear end um or anything like that yeah, this right. one's uh this one's sus buddy looks like there's some epoxy on it that kind of yeah that one's uh might have epoxy to self close i'm gonna i don't know take a part and break off no. i mean the, the thing just chugs along like first gear is geez she got some torque to her you cannot see around you though Make sure I don't hit my roof for your truck. Yeah, as I was saying, like, yeah, don't hit the, the roof. Are we gonna clear the roof? I don't know. When I first bought this place, I came in with a U-Haul and clipped the roof. Did you? Day one. <laughs> I was like, well, I own it now. Oh, dude, we would have hit if we were went underneath it. Yeah. Oh, because the, the bed, huh? Yeah, the bed's so high. I think the air conditioning works. It's freaking hot in here. <laughs> You're in a hood. <laughs> Let's see. Fan off. Hold on, let's turn the fan on. Oh, 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 oh the fan blows. works. It blows. The fan works. Is it cold? I don't know what's cold and what's hot. I'm assuming the air would come out of here, right? It's just like its own little thing. I don't know how air conditioners work back uh, in the day. I don't know. I feel air though on my on my ankles though. We got a fan. Look at the CB bracket was there. It used to have a CB in it. Should we get her out on the road and open her up? Yeah, we can go for it. Tires look alright, so we should be okay. Yeah, we should be good. This thing was like in use. Right. When my uncle bought the farm, I think he just didn't have a use for it. Right. I know the tires don't uh. They don't match, obviously, but I mean, who cares? Yeah, yeah. hopefully they put the, the traction ear tires on the side that's big. Right. Yeah, though, they, they had this thing all apart, man. So, I mean, like, I mean, from the hubs down to the brake lines to everything else. Oh, she don't turn as tight oh, as the... Oh. She don't turn bad, though. No. Oh, we ain't got no horn. We need, we need a horn. We need a horn. <laughs> yes, we need to some train. We got it as best as going down my butt cracker right now. Right, this air feels hot. We should probably turn this air on. Yeah, I don't know. It's... Maybe the temp's on hot. Let's try it on this side. Okay, so that's the that's a fan speed. Yeah. Dude, she shifts great. For not having power steering, obviously, you know, in the yard it sucks. Once you're moving, no problem. Right. We got the high-low splitter right here. I don't really know the proper way to use it. But we'll figure that out. All right, one second. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Spoke a little soon and might have, you know, shut off on us. Give a second, you know. We'll get through the bumpy part and we'll fire her back up. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, this has been a great video so far. <laughs> You know, it ain't like, you know, like the old days, you gotta give it a little gas. Right. Ain't got no gas there. It's got a, oh, the fuel gauge is empty. Yeah. She, she probably does not have any gas there. Probably not. Yeah, we probably, we should probably go, let's go put probably, some gas there. Probably go back, yeah. All right, let's go put some gas there. Torky girl. Because they definitely drained the fuel tank at one point because it was like blacker than like dirt. Like it was like super black. Gotcha. Um, I guess they said at one point it like stained their hands. It was so that was so bad. Gross. Um, and then you said the, the rear end it was almost like, like mud. Down right here. Hopefully not get stuck in the swamp where you guys get stuck. Oh, that's where I got stuck at. So she don't like you know to like. No, I don't feel like we gotta. We gotta. She's torqued. That, that's low. That's, that's low. low. All right. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> out is high on the shifter. There we go. Now we're in high. All right. Okay. I guess we're just staying high. We're cruising. Right. See if I can get it into third because that didn't happen a minute ago. Or is third? <laughs> there would be. It's a non-synchronized transmission. Does that mean like you gotta you gotta give her some revs? I don't know. Does that mean like the clutch is clearly not? Can I just put it into third from a stop? 
I mean, that yeah, should be third, right? Third, yeah, so. Oh yeah, let's first, go third low. Second. See if we'll take off. Okay. Should be able to take off the third. All right. All right, we gotta figure out how to shift this thing. All right, third low. There's third high. You get a cruise, does the speedo work? Um, I'm gonna say it's probably not. It doesn't look like a speedo's moving. No. Probably means the tack's not working either. <laughs> Oh, dude, imagine back in the day. Yeah, right. A couple of us making some brain. <laughs> Got a bumper to bumper warranty. Oh, so, I, found, I found the hole in the road. <laughs> all right, all right. We, I heard these things are like a nightmare to downshift. I mean, we were almost at a stop when we downshifted. No, because uh, points on the trailer, definitely sketchy. We got a throttle knob here. Oh, dude, we'll just use that. We don't even need to give it gas. It's got cruise control. <laughs> nice and cruise control. Look at that. We've got cruise control. Go. It's like a lawnmower. <laughs> Jeez. Jesus. Run it until you find it. Oh, oh, oh. Find it? There you go. Maybe I was just in the wrong spot. I just had, had to shift over a little bit. Because up and down, and then. It's like oh, way up, over. Yeah. yeah. Gas in there. Can we downshift? Can we downshift? There we go. All right, it ain't too bad. Ultimate test. Diamond C in the back of this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck. Oh, I got it. No worries, that. Like one of the leaves are like split. Gotcha. It isn't the whole the whole thing, but it's. Yeah. I want to say maybe it's the bottom one that's cracking half. I don't know. I mean, he, we got 72 leaves. Yeah, he said something about. I said something about it, it was. Crack or whatever, but then you can see all the new brake lines. So see, like the new brake lines they did. Yeah, it looks. The rear end got all replaced. All those new fluids in it. All right, I'm gonna go grab some gas. Don't worry, we've got our California approved, doesn't leak at all gas can. Uh, how it just? It's it's yeah, it's it's not. Oh wait. You gotta push that in. You know, safety. You gotta have your safety on your uh, <laughs> thing here. And then, then you gotta mush this whole thing forward. And then there's no air release, so it just like locks up. And Is it going? Yeah, barely. All right, we're gonna give a shot. A little PTO dump action in or out for the PTO. Gotta have the clutch in, oh, baby. Right. Nah, in. I hear the PTO spinning. I don't know what this does. Oh, there, there it is. Look at that. We dumped from inside the cab. Oh, that's a game changer right there. All right, we don't want to dump all the cords. Look at that. Go back down, go back down. A little slower on the down. Yeah, don't change, don't change, don't throttle. Come on, do it. Yeah, that's a balance. Good just, there you go. Good news is though, PTO works. And I'm assuming those side little levers is for some type of like accessory that you can run off with the hydraulic pump off the PTO. I don't really know. We got a high beam switch down here for our headlights. I feel like they need to bring these back to cars other than like, Automatic high beams are great, like the Bronco has. It's the greatest thing ever, especially where I live, because you're constantly high beam, low beam, high beam, low beam, going through the mountain roads anytime somebody comes around the corner. But like, if you have your hands full, not that you should while you're driving, the freaking high beam switch on the floor, like we need to bring these back. Cause you can just be cruising, you know, back here, you're not reaching for your high beam, trying to find your high beam. Just do it on the floor, that's where it's at. Uh, let's see, do the wipers work? Yeah, wipers work, lights, I don't know what L A T R means. Oh, that one—that one's a little stiff. I don't know what that means. If anybody knows what L dot A T R means, on there, you let me know. We got the throttle, R air, rear air. What's it got? What does that mean? I don't know what that means. We got the choke, fan. Something was there. I guess they didn't get that factory off. But this thing specked out pretty freaking killer. Oh, look at that! Five gallons brought us up to almost half a tank. Probably like a 13 gallon tank, I would assume. Small old truck. Temps are looking good. I don't think the speedometer works, which tells me the odometer probably doesn't work. No oil lights on. I mean, the lights work. I don't know what gen means. That generator is, I don't like what they used to call an alternator. In this. Not really sure. You guys are smarter than me, but it seems like aside from the air conditioning, and that could just be me not knowing how to use it, like everything here works. And everything's in good condition. Even the visor is in like good condition. Look at them. They did that back in the 60s. Some cars don't even do that nowadays. Ridiculous. Look at like these embossed little stars in the dash. Look how good this dash is. 
this was like there's like levels of farming right and i feel like when you get to this level of farming you have really nice equipment and you take really good care of it um even in the 60s i don't know how many owners there were i don't believe there were very many owners of this truck you know we've got all the paperwork it's registered i got all the all the stuff what do we got in here a bunch of hooks i believe these are for the sideboards 3800 rpms was that 146 whopping horsepower right there we got in here what do we got in here we got a leather pat, a leather something. What's this? Hillsboro. Is this a keychain? Ford. Hillsboro Ford, maybe? Hillsboro Auto Inc. Now that's old school right there. You know, guys, after upgrading to my Diamond C with hydraulic jacks, I said I'd never do this again. <laughs> but here we are. Anthony's getting his gooseneck hooked back up. It has been, uh, let's see, we stopped filming the other day. Enjoyed our weekend, enjoyed having them out at the ranch. It's been a good time. Anthony's making like, pulling double duty on this trip. Yeah. <laughs> so he brought out, obviously, the F600 for me, and then he's bringing back that truck that you see sitting back there in the field for a buddy of his. So we're gonna load that up right now. Apparently that truck didn't have an engine in it as of like two days ago. So he slapped an engine in it and then dropped it off here to Anthony, for Anthony to take back to Colorado. Just let me know when you're ready to upgrade to a Diamond C, all right? Yeah, I know. Pretty soon, man. Like I said, I'm not gonna lie. This PJ is definitely, uh, definitely been nice, for sure. Well, it's time for something a little more, uh, old man style. Hydraulics, you know. Little features in there? Something, something a, little, a little more fancy. See what we got over here. We got us a Chevy Heartbeat of America. License plate. You got any keys in it? Um. This thing was, we weren't here the other day when this got dropped, so. Yeah, there's keys in it. All right. Is it stolen? Oh, who? He tipped me. Yeah, two uh, bucks? Two, two bucks. There you go. Jesus. Is there an exhaust on it? Uh, I think so. I don't think there's an exhaust. The windows don't work? Uh, Jeez, dark. they're dark. So yeah, Anthony's buddy showed up yesterday while we were gone and uh he drove that thing i don't even know i think it was on the road like for almost 10 hours yesterday to come drop that off so i think i bring it back to colorado for him she sounds rough she sounds rough oh she squatted though That, that's, that's not fun. His little uh, torsion drop bracket hits on your trailer. I had to squat the truck, you know? Probably right. some, so, uh, sounds horrible. <laughs> Jeez. Because we're too lazy to uh, grab more wood, we're just grabbing what was next to the trailer we'll see if that's enough to get the rear high enough quicker to get it over we only got to clear by like two inches down there i don't know if you're gonna that you're gonna fight that six five but let's see oh you're just gonna go for it you're good right there yeah you should just roll into it keep rolling keep going no 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 Ooh. Nah, now we're all screwed up on the approach angle she slid over a little bit crew to the mini truck Grab some two by tens, maybe a two by twelve. See if we can put them on top of the ramp, get the rear end to come up a little bit sooner. Oh, turn. So we're gonna get the front up first. All right, right there. This is as hokey and sketchy as it looks, but we'll see. We'll see what that does. There's like, a, there's an engine block and a pressure washer and all kinds of crap in the back. So it's not helping us. It's probably gonna, you know, snap this wood in half, but let's see. Huh. Yep. You're good, you're good, keep going, keep going. There we go, look at that, a little, little wood sacrifice. 
guys. It ain't stupid if it works. Alrighty, y'all. Well, the sun is setting behind me, so we're gonna have to wrap up this video. There's been a lot of days in this video. I got a lot of people I gotta thank. I gotta thank Jeff and all the family back in Minnesota for selling me this beautiful rig. Huge thank you to Anthony, to Andrew, the Moras for bringing this thing out to me. Without them, I was kind of at my wits end of dealing with transport companies that kept flaking on me. Super appreciative of them. I mean, there's just days and days and days of driving wrapped up into getting this thing. Huge thank you to them and a huge thank you to Chris and all the guys over at Graco for putting in a lot of work to get this thing dialed in. Um, again, I mean, there's just so many days wrapped up into this. I know it's only a 30, 40, whatever minute video, but so many days, so many moving pieces, so many awesome people came together to make this happen and I'm very appreciative of all of them. Also, I went over and talked to James and apparently uh, he thinks this might be for like a stump grinder or some type of other attachment that we could hook up to this and he actually might have one sitting in his yard. So we'll see if we get something hooked up and uh, play with this a little bit later. But with that, we're gonna wrap up. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any cool ideas, let me know what you think we should do with this truck. I'm like torn now of keeping it a ranch truck or making it something super cool, modern engine. I don't even know, diesel something maybe. Uh, if you'd be so kind as to give this video a like, a thumbs up. Also, if you wouldn't mind, please check out workfortapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best. I'm out. Damn. Yeah.